been years of waiting, Sony's next-gen console has been announced today. Throw out the name Orbis, it's dead. We are officially looking at the PlayStation 4. I know, crazy name, right? It was announced in a two-hour press conference streamed online, and surprisingly, in all those two hours, we did not get a look at the console they were announcing. We do know a little bit about what's inside the console, uh, not from the presser, but from some specs that were released. It is running on an x86 CPU with 8 gigabytes of memory, APU technology, and GDDR5 memory, which is typically reserved for high-end, top-of-the-line graphics cards. You have my attention. The PS4 architects know something that all PS3 players know very well. It's that waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting sucks. So they put a heavy emphasis on not waiting. One thing that's on the line is there will be no boot up time to turn on the console. You can just hit the power button and immediately resume where you left off. That sounds pretty nice. Also, when you digitally download a game, you can play the game while it's still downloading. And if you make use of the share button, which I will tell you more about later on in which you share your gameplay experience that could seamlessly upload while you're still playing using a secondary chip. The system supports uploads of seamless gameplay, spectating friends gameplay sessions in real time as well as integrated chat with social media, i.e. Facebook. Last year we reported that Sony had bought Gaikai, a cloud gaming service, and that we thought they would probably implement it into PS4. Well, that's not a probably, it's a definitely. They have gotten the green light to build infrastructure for the world's fastest gaming system, which sounds great in theory. Using Gaikai, Sony is going to try to fill out its old catalog with that technology, so theoretically you can play PS1, PS2, PS3, Vita, PSP, PS Mobile, all on the PS4, though the discs themselves will not work, which begs the question, do you have to rebuy all your old favorite games? No answers on that one just yet. I'm going to go ahead and speculate here that you will have to buy everything again. That Obviously, sounds like probably Sony. Probably not at retail price. Obviously, you're not going to buy, <laughs> you know, God of War 3 again at 60 bucks just to download it. But you're going to probably spend another 25 bucks, 20 bucks. Like, it's like when they um, release the first PS, um, the PS2 games, the God of War ones. Yeah. So they re-released them and you were able to download them for PS3. So I'm guessing that's what's going to happen, like a download basis. Obviously not retail price, but you're still going to have to well, I don't put know. Up that's, some money for that. That's kind of annoying because you, you feel like you own the game already, right? I mean, it's annoying enough if I have, okay, I have an Xbox and a PS3. I want to play certain right. games on the other one, and I feel annoyed because I, f I feel like I've paid my dues already. Even though that makes no sense, this actually does make sense. It's on the same system or the same company. You've, you've given them your money. I mean, why... Uh, I don't think I, I would, there's many games in the catalog I'd be willing to pay for again. I think that's ultimately the question is like how many old games are you going to be willing to buy again? Well, like, they say it, it will be all the games, but there's very few that have the novelty factor or maybe the nostalgia factor that make it worth the price. Um, I imagine, you know, maybe I'll buy Final Fantasy VII. I don't know. That's a big maybe. I'll still buy Puzzle Fighter. <laughs> I love that. Game. Well, they say they're going to be rolling this out, this cloud gaming with the entire catalog in phases. So my guess is the best games won't be immediately available when the PlayStation 4 comes out, which is kind of the problem the Wii U had. So we're in more than one way rehashing some Wii U issues, good and bad. I wonder if it's going to be a fee that you're going to have to pay now. Oh, like to, to have access? To have access to a cloud service. So do you mean like an access, a, a fee to access it at all, like or Xbox Live? Have. Or just to be able to, you know how um, certain music services work where you have access to all of it, but only for a finite amount of time. Do you mean right. like that? Yes, exactly. Or, and obviously how much space are they going to provide for you? Some of these games are going to be... Well, you they're know, in the cloud, they're, so... Yeah, but like, for example, like Amazon has a limit. You know, mm -hmm. like you could buy... Every time you buy music on Amazon, it automatically gets put on your cloud service. But you have a limit. I yeah. think it's five gigs or 20 gigs. I don't know to be exact, but there is a limit. But you could buy more. 
The question is, it just seems like now well, so everything's going to be right now. something. Everything's going to be monetized, either downloading games, the cloud service, and I wonder even if the online play is going to be charged now. I think what they're focusing on for the present time is saying that it's fast. There's no waiting, and theoretically, they're kind of nailing it because casual and mobile gaming's the edge they have is that they're fast. There's no console lag, which is awesome. I think that's what they're leaning toward, and I think their goal right now is trying to um, make the console more mainstream and more accessible and more conventional. They've also announced a new DualShock 4 controller. Looking at it, it makes me think, hey, you got Vita on my DualShock. Well, you got DualShock on my Vita. Let's try them together. There is a touchpad in the center of the new DualShock 4 that's very reminiscent of the back touch sensor on the Vita. Um, this is also where you find your button to share. With the share option, you can capture the last few minutes of your gameplay and share it. Mark Cerny, who was leading this portion of the press conference, said that theoretically you could share maybe an issue that you're having via this and someone else could resume gameplay for you remotely. So if you're like me and you have trouble flying, Someone else could take care of that for you. That also eliminates some of the frustration. But the other side of share is that PS4 allows social spectating. So you could send your videos to Ustream. And I like that, that it's baked into the console. It's not something peripheral you have to do. How do you feel about that? Like, I don't know how I feel about I that. I like it because if there's something I'm trying again and again and again and again, and I'm just not getting it, and there's no way I'm going to get it, I don't need to rage quit. I can say. Rage quit, that's awesome. Rage quit is my favorite word, I and I taught it to Jenk. Um, <laughs> so I like that a lot. I mean, it's not something you want to do all the time. I hit a point where somebody's going to start charging for that, like our oh, like producer Tim said. Gamer prostitution? Yeah, totally. <laughs> like, I can't pass as well. I could pass that for you for the right price. Well, you could also use it to, maybe you're, you need a health potion. Your friend could send you it that way. That's what it says in here, the specs, allegedly. I don't know how that's going to work. We don't like it, uh, right now at least, but it seems like the Vita is being shoehorned into the PS4 too, perhaps in, the, in an attempt to get us to buy it, which numbers have shown we don't really want to do. This makes use of a second screen option, much like the Wii U, where you would have an extra screen. Say if you're in an adventure game, you could have a map there. More interestingly though, there is an app, the PlayStation app, which will be available for iPhone, iPad, and Android handhelds, and that would turn that into your second screen, which I like a lot better. This news sounds very familiar to Microsoft's Smart Glass initiative announced at E3 last year. So there's another instance of Sony perhaps borrowing an idea from a competitor. The question I have for you, Kim, though, is I know I saw you watching the announcement, and when Mark Cerny presented his, his new game, Knack, you kind of had a funny reaction. Okay, here's the deal. PlayStation is known for its incredible graphics, incredibly realistic, awe-inspiring realism. I get that Knack is probably a fun game. It's a cute game. But it should not have been the first game that I saw built for the PS4. I should have been seeing a visually stunning game, and it, this was sub-DreamWorks level computer animation CGI, pretty much, in my opinion. You probably disagree. You probably hate me for it. it, it that game did look like you're saying DreamWorks when Toy Story, the first one, came out well, back in the early 90s. It not even really, that. I it mean, didn't even look impressive. You're like, oh, come on. Was that Like you're saying, like if you're going to debut something, I would have gone with something a bit of more odd. More inspiring, More inspiring yes. right? I guess that's kind of starting with your B team almost. I want to see your A game. And we did see that a little bit later on when David Cage from Quantic Dream showed up. And he didn't even have a demo. He had a tech demo. And he was showing the different range of emotions that could be portrayed with this. The PS4 had the enough horsepower for real emotions. And he had a model of an old man's face emoting different expressions, and it looked so real, and you can read these feelings on a fake model, which I enjoyed very much. Uh, Quantic Dream is also responsible for Beyond Two Souls, which will be on the PS4. That's the Alan Page vehicle. And they had also done Heavy Rain, so they, they did some impressive work. I would have liked to have seen that much earlier on than I did. I think I'm a fan of um, Killzone, so... Mm -hmm. 
just seeing that and knowing that there's a new game coming out. Killzone Shadowfall. Yes, so that looked great, and I'm excited about that. They probably should have led with that, like you're saying. <laughs> I guess when you are you have a big position, you get to deal out what you want to deal out, as Mark Cerny did. He was showing off Knack because he had the luxury of being the man leading the presentation. So he kind of just went, hey, check out my new game, which is... Uh, Maybe not the best route, but right. what are you going to do? How are you going to stop that guy? Exactly. How are you going to stop the, the architect of the PS4 from showing off his game? As I could tell, he had the floor at the time. He did. So I guess he did have the power to show that. I mean, but another it, thing that we saw was Infamous, and it seemed like you... I was in the have, Infamous. I don't know if you had mixed emotions or you're excited. I was excited to see it. Uh, infamous Second Son will be an exclusive for the PS4. And there's two things about it I really like. One, Cole is gone. Yes. Two. It, I don't it's, know how I feel about that, but go on. How you feel about? I I don't. I'm not a crazy about Cole, and I'm not crazy about his voice or his story. But there's a new character, an unnamed character, and he's already my favorite of the two. The theme of this story is that security comes at a cost, and there is a motif of Big Brother is watching, and it's kind of a revenge against that. I mean, who here? at the Young Turks doesn't like that. I mean, I could see Jank playing that game, and I can't see Jank playing any games before this. He says, she would ask me before, is the PS move dead? It is not dead. Uh, <laughs> Media Molecule, the makers of Little Big Planet, have returned with a new use for the PS move. It's key to their new technology in which you make dreams come to life. And it's essentially a sculpting tool. You'd be able to, to sculpt things digitally with the move and it would come to life, well not come, come to fruition quick enough that you would still have it fresh in your mind. You wouldn't have to deal with the tyranny of polygons as he had called it. And you can design entire game levels with things that you've sculpted and it kind of kicks up Little Big Planet's creativity mode that much higher. So PS Move still alive, can't kill it. Thanks a lot, little big planet. You would think that they might have want to go in the connect way of not. Well, that's what the eye seems to be doing. Details are pretty scant about the new PlayStation Eye, but we do know that it has a 1280 by 800 pixel sensor capable of capturing video at 60 frames per second, which is a step up from the Kinect. Um, it could also find the light bar on the controller. They haven't really said what this function is for. It's maybe to perhaps find the gamers or maybe add another level of functionality. The presentation ended with one bit of information. The PlayStation 4 will be released holiday 2013. Sometime in December. Not exactly sure what date is. We will know when we get closer. There's a few other key points of information missing in that we don't know what the console looks like still. We also don't know how much it will cost. Rumors say around $500. We don't know for sure. And lastly, how do all these things work? We don't know. They used a certain key word again and again and again throughout the presser, and that is magic, which is not a great word to use when describing how electronics work. So that's what we're excited about. If I missed any tech demos that stuck out to you, or game demos, let us know below. And also, is this enough to sway you into buying the PlayStation 4, or will you stick with your current gen or Xbox or PC? Please let us know.